Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode we're going to be diving back into the world of operating system customization by checking out a pretty cool project for any Linux system running XFCE that transforms it to look like Windows XP. It's called the Windows XP Total Conversion Mod for XFCE and it's been released by Rosniak here over on GitHub. So I'll have this repository link down below and we're going to be going through the installation process in this video because this is a bit more involving than like a transformation pack or a single executable script that handles everything for you. You pretty much have to do everything yourself, including compiling the repository because there hasn't been a release pushed out yet. And as the author says down here, this is not something to put on your parents, grandparents, or whoever's computer to ease them into Linux or something. I share this project for the interest of Windows and Linux enthusiasts. And everything is massively under construction, so this is not a uh, final product yet, but it's still very impressive. As you can see from these screenshots here, it does a really good job at mimicking the Windows XP look and feel. Now, I also want to thank Dominic Hayes for suggesting this project to me and also posting a tutorial video on his channel that was really useful to follow along with to get everything set up and working off camera during my testing of this. Because there are a couple of points where we actually have to diverge from the tutorial posted here on GitHub to get this working, at least under Zubuntu here, which is what I am currently running. So if you scroll down here on the GitHub page, there is a link to the building and installation guide. And we're going to begin by compiling everything. So if you click here, it lists the prerequisites that you need to have. So we're going to open up a terminal window, which is where we're going to be for a majority of at least this first portion of the video. So the first thing we got to do is install the required packages that it lists there. So we'll go ahead and put in my password and do that. And once that finishes up, we can move on to cloning the repository. So we're just going to go back here in a new tab to the main page and then just copy the web URL here. And I'm actually going to navigate to my desktop and we're just going to run git clone and paste that uh, URL there. Oh, yeah. And it would help if we install git, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's something that is not listed here as a uh, prerequisite that you need to have installed, but you certainly need to have it installed if it's not already. So now we can run this command and have it clone the repository. And now we need to navigate into the packaging directory because there is this checkdeps.sh script that you need to uh, utilize for this next command. So we are going to change directory to that. And then you just run this uh, last command here since we are using a uh, Debian based distro. So we can just paste that into there and you see it's going to install a whole bunch of packages here. And now we get to the part where we actually build the thing. So we're already in this packaging folder and there's this build all.sh script that we have to run. But I do want to make note of the SKU because by default, uh, it will use Windows XP professional branding, specifically the X64 edition of XP Pro. But you can change that by using dash S and then you could type out this string for Windows Server 2003 standard edition, for example. But we're just going to keep it at the default. So we're just going to run build all dot sh and this will take a little while and by that I mean a couple of minutes and with that compiled now we can go into the folder here and under packaging xptc and we go into all these folders there are a bunch of deb files that we need to install on the system so we're just going to change directory and drag this in here to save me from having to type all that out and then we got to run sudo apt install period slash asterisk dot deb to get all those installed and that is all we have to do to compile and install everything so now we can move on to the manual configuration and we pretty much just have to go down the whole list here. So we'll move this over to the side and start with opening up the XFCE appearance settings. And it installs a handful of themes. So you've got the Windows XP blue style, which is, you know, your traditional uh, default one. You've got olive green, silver. You have the Zune style. You even have the Windows classic style and the professional or the watercolor theme from the Windows Whistler builds. So we're just going to go with the default blue theme. And you can see already it's taken effect on the application windows here, but there is a lot more that we have to do to complete this look. 
we got to set the icons of course so if we go under icons there is a luna uh, theme so we're going to set that and you can see all the icons change under fonts we need to change the default font to tahoma regular size 8 and it says to put the hinting to full so we'll do that and uh the author recommends enabling anti-aliasing which we will do that was already on anyways and I think that is it for the appearance uh, options here. So we're going to close out of that. And next we have to open up the window manager settings. We need to change the title font to this one here. We're gonna go MS bold size 10. And if you were using the professional or Windows classic uh, variants, you would change that to Tahoma bold size eight. And then we're going to change title alignment to left and the button layout is actually already the way it's supposed to be so we don't even have to mess with that and that i believe is everything in this panel next up we got to open up window manager tweaks so we'll uh go into here and go over to the compositor tab and we need to disable shadows under pop-up windows dock windows is already unchecked and regular windows that I believe is everything under there. So now we got to change the cursor, which is going to be under mouse and touchpad. We'll go to theme. And then th there's actually two Windows XP ones. We're just going to go with the first one because I think it looks closer to the true XP style. But you've got this other one down here. And of course, you can change the cursor size if you want. Now for the shell setup, this is where we actually deviate from the guide a little bit because Dominic in his guide uh, recommends that you don't quit out of the XFCE4 panel and XF desktop because it makes it easier to go through and change some of these other settings when you still have access to the menu. What we are going to do though is manually run WinTC-Desktop, which is the Windows Total Conversion Desktop. You see it's even got a build string down there, which is a nice touch. And then to run the taskbar and start menu, that's going to be uh, WinTC-Taskband. And that, you know, gets this running. So we still have, you know, the XFCE1 running up here. We're just going to leave it there for now. Because now what we have to do is configure the system to automatically launch both of these applications upon boot up. And that's going to be under session and startup under application auto start. So we're going to add and you can name it whatever you want. We'll just call this uh, WinTC desktop. And the command, of course, is WinTC dash desktop trigger on login and then we will add the taskbar so wintc task band command wintc dash task band trigger on login okay and you want to make sure of course both of those are checked next we'll go under uh, the keyboard application shortcuts so that's going to be right here and right here and we're going to add a shortcut for run which is one of the programs that gets added and this is just like the windows xp run dialog so we'll hit OK and then press Windows key R and override the existing shortcut. So now if I do that, it brings up this little run dialog here. And the next thing is we're still in the keyboard settings under application shortcuts. You want to add uh, this is for setting up the Windows key to open the start menu as opposed to the XFCE menu. So we're going to add a shortcut and it's going to be this uh, command right here. So we'll paste that there. And the combo is actually going to be Alt and then F1 and you're going to override the existing shortcut. And next we need to go back to a terminal window and we already have Xcape installed. So we're just going to run this command and this basically sets the super L key or like the Windows key to uh, when you hit that press Alt and then F1, which is what we just did. That basically, you know, creates a shortcut of a shortcut to open up the uh, Windows uh, start menu down here or the, you know, recreation of it anyways. So we'll paste this command in here. And now if I press Windows key, it opens this up. You see that, you know, it kind of tries to open up the XFCE menu uh, for like a split second there. That won't happen when we don't have the XFCE taskbar and everything running, uh, which we will quit that uh, momentarily here. But first, we got to uh, set the sound theme. So this is going to be in uh, the settings editor and under X settings. And there's two in here that we have to change. The first is enable event sounds. We'll set that to true and enable input feedback sounds. Set that to true. And then we got to set the sound theme name. So we'll go uh, back in here. Sound theme name, Windows XP default. And this takes effect immediately. So if we go down here to the little volume applet in the system tray, mm -hmm. 
you can hear that we've got the Windows XP sounds working. So yeah, uh, next up the login screen. This one's pretty simple. We just got to open up a terminal window and we need to um, edit this uh, configuration file. So we'll run sudo nano and paste that in there. Now this file is blank and it kind of implies on this page here, like there's already gonna be a bunch of stuff in here, but there's not at least here on Zubuntu. And it doesn't mention that you have to add in uh, this first line, which is gonna be seat defaults in brackets there. Then we can copy and paste this greeter session line. And then we can control S to save that and close out of it. And again, I got to give a huge thanks to Dominic here because again, this guide does not say uh, like how you're supposed to set that file up specifically under Zubuntu anyways. And if you don't have it exactly like that, the system will just never load the login screen and get stuck on the boot screen. And speaking of, we also have to diverge from the guide in the boot screen section because this command actually doesn't work. So if we try to just uh, paste this in here, it's just going to say that it cannot find this command. Now, Plymouth is a valid command. So, you know, if we were to like run that, it will give us, you know, the various options that we have for it. And I thought that maybe this was like, a, oh, this was supposed to be space dash set default theme or dash dash set default theme. But no, it's not. This command just doesn't work. Uh, what Dominic did in his video is he ran uh, this command right here. It's sudo update dash alternative alternatives dash dash install and then you manually just type out uh, this uh, directory and just link to this uh, default.plymouth file. So we're going to run that and then you want to run this command right here. So we'll paste that in there and there we go. It's generated that. So now uh, if we've done everything properly, when we restart, we should see the boot screen and the login screen change to a Windows XP lookalike. But there is one more thing that I want to do. So we're just going to close out of Firefox and go back up here and open session and startup again. Go under current session and we're going to kill uh, the XFCE4 panel process and the XF desktop process. Then we're going to click on save session. And now when we restart, uh, we should just have the Windows XP taskbar and desktop start. And here is the moment of truth. Did we do everything right? Yes, we did. All right. So yeah, again, uh, Windows XP X64 edition is the uh, uh, default SKU that it selects. So that's what the branding is going to be. And here is the login screen, which looks fantastic. And it's actually animated. You got an animated Windows flag here. And we're going to select uh, my name, type in my password and log in. Now, of course, we got to do a little bit more customization because we got to add the bliss wallpaper. And thankfully, if we go back in here and open up run, if I can get over there, there are a couple of Windows control panel applets that have been recreated. One of those is desk.cpl, which is the uh, display properties uh, window. Now, most of this is completely non-functional, so you can't apply a theme from here or a screensaver or change your appearance settings or your resolution and color settings, but you can select a desktop wallpaper. And the author has included a bunch of the XP default wallpapers, so we have Bliss. We'll set that position to stretch and we'll apply that. And there you go. And I mean, this is such a good one to one recreation of Windows XP, especially with the Bliss wallpaper applied. It just looks fantastic. I think you could put this in front of somebody and convince them that it was Windows XP, at least at first glance. Maybe if they ignore this Windows total conversion build tag down there. But that being said, there are a couple of things that are not implemented yet. For example, you cannot right click on the desktop at all. If you go into the start menu and right click on something, it just does the same thing as left clicking. So it will open up the application. You can't change your user profile picture that has not been implemented yet. But we do have, for example, if we go back into run and open up Winver, we've got that. And something I've also noticed is the cursor will kind of arbitrarily change between white and black. So you see now it's a black cursor. I've noticed that if you go into control panel, it will change back to white. I think this is kind of a thing, at least in uh, XFCE, where when you open up certain applications that have maybe a darker interface, the cursor will change to white so you can see it better and vice versa. So I, I've, I've kind of noticed that as you open up certain applications here. But yeah, so you've 
got uh, Winver. You have, uh, if we open up sysdm.cpl, this is the system properties panel, which you can see has been uh, modified to have uh, canonical Ubuntu branding down here. And you've got your uh, computer specifications. There's even, if you go into all programs under accessories, we've got Notepad and we have Windows Explorer which uh, is a pretty good recreation of this. So you can use this as your default file browser if you want to. So you can browse in here and you can see that like some of the icons don't get changed. So you have, you know, this folder icon uh, in, in certain places. And this application is a little bit buggy. Like, you know, the back button doesn't seem to work at least in this folder. Let's just go uh, manually type and go back up to uh, the root directory. Let's see if that's the case all the time. Yeah, I don't think these buttons work at all. So those don't do anything. Uh, search here is not implemented, so you can't really do anything with that. Though you can view this like tree view here on the side. You cannot change the view up here though of the current folder that you're browsing. And some of these options up here just don't do anything. Like is this copy of Windows legal? Doesn't do anything. Help and support does nothing. About Windows will bring up uh, Winver, so there you go. You even have Internet Explorer as well, and that can be accessed both in the start menu or just by typing in a URL in the Windows Explorer program, which is exactly how it functions on Windows XP. The only thing is, at least in VMware here, and this is something that Dominic mentions in his video as well, it doesn't seem to render anything properly, any uh, web pages that you go to. Now, this does utilize WebKit GTK, so this is like a modern web browser under the hood, but it's unfortunate that we can't get anything to actually load. That being said, I was able to get YouTube to almost load. We'll just open up the regular Internet Explorer application for this and we'll change the size of the window. So this is what it normally does. Now you can still like click on links. Like if I were to move over here, you can see that it changes to the hand cursor and I can drag this around and you know, it kind of shows a little icon there. So it has like loaded the page. We just can't see anything. But I've noticed that if you go to YouTube, it will load the outline of the page here. But again, we just can't actually see any content to click on. And then it just crashes because of course it does. I'd also like to run through the different XP visual styles again. Now you can get to the appearance settings in control panel, which is just mapped to the XFCE settings panel. And that's the same for uh, pretty much everything in here. Like if you go to my documents, it opens up the documents folder in the default file browser. And same with like uh, my pictures, you know, my music. I don't think my recent documents actually does anything. Like if we make a plain text file and open this up, and you know, save this. I'm actually curious to see, this is something I haven't tested. Does it actually populate a list here? Oh, it does, look at that. So that's cool, you got my recent documents working. Uh, my computer will open up the file system in the uh, default file browser. And again, yeah, go into control panel, opens up the XFCE settings menu. So you can go to appearance, and just to show you how the different visual styles look when everything is uh, set up properly. So here's olive green, here is silver, here is the zoom style, which is my favorite XP style. I know I've said that plenty of times, it looks fantastic. And then of course you have Windows Classic style, which will, uh, when you set it to this and the professional theme for the first time, you have to open up the start menu once, close it, and then open it again for it to redo the sizing there. So there's that and professional. Now again, you have to mess with the font settings a little bit if you uh, want to apply the professional or the Windows Classic uh, styles, or don't, you can just leave them the way they are, that's fine too. Too. But I think we're just going to leave it at the uh, default blue theme for the rest of this video, which really the only other thing that I want to mention at this point is what happens to Firefox. What happens to Firefox is nothing because this theme does not work with Firefox. It's just incompatible, so it will retain its original look. Dominic in his video installed Gekium, which is a project that we took a look at not too long ago on this channel. And sure enough, you can tweak it a little bit to uh, you know make it fit in better with the overall Windows XP visual style. I would link to his video, but again, it is unlisted, so I'm not sure if he wants that public. But I will link to his channel uh, if you want to go and check him out. And again, I just want to give a huge thank you to him because uh, he literally made this video possible because, uh, again, you know, we had to kind of diverge from the official setup guide on the GitHub page a little bit to get this working under Zubuntu here. But there you have it. That is the Windows XP total conversion mod for XFCE. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, maybe consider becoming a patron or a channel member to get early access to these videos before anybody else. But either way, I just want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.